Hello from my suite on the Norwegian breakaway. I'm here with one of my two traveling companions. And in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some of the highlights of the seven day Western Caribbean cruise that we're on. I want to start by showing you an amazing thing I caught on video when I was up on the sports court on the upper deck of the Norwegian breakaway. I needed an action shot. And this kid happened to be standing right in front of my camera. Honestly, I didn't think that he had much of a chance of making a great shot, but never judge a book by its cover, right? So watch what happened. Oh, yes! You've got to hand it to that kid. When the camera was pointed his way, he made the big shot. One other cool thing I saw up on the sports deck was this bungee trampoline thing. We sure didn't have anything nearly this fun to play on back when I was a kid. Now we're in the Norwegian Breakaways Arcade. My wife was delighted to discover that they have her favorite arcade game. It's a variation on air hockey called Pac-Man Smash. While Kellen and I were playing, a couple of kids walked by, so I handed the camera over to one of them and asked him to be our cameraman. And it was funny that these two particular kids happened to be the ones we ran into because one of them had actually seen some of my videos on YouTube and knew who I was. Wait a minute, I know you. You're not a YouTube guy. Yeah. You're not a YouTube guy. I know your videos. So for a minute, I felt like I was kind of a big deal, like being Casey Neistat, riding a boosted board through the streets of New York City. And that helped ease the pain of getting defeated at Pac-Man Smash. I'm sorry, I think she's gonna win this time. I think she is. Oh. She won. Good game. Oh, that hurt. The home port for our cruise was New Orleans, and this was the view from our balcony that afternoon we boarded. Look at that muddy water of the Mississippi River. It's kind of ironic that we start in muddy water like this, and a few days later we'll be swimming in some of the clearest water you'll ever see, the beautiful waters of the Caribbean. Carnival Dream was docked just in front of us in New Orleans that day, and she pulled away from the dock just before we did. That building on the right there with the white top, that's a big shopping mall, part of one of New Orleans' biggest tourist attractions called the River Walk. We had walked through it just the day before, not realizing that right in front of the mall's food court was where our cruise ship would be docked the next day. Sailing down the Mississippi River from New Orleans is a very interesting experience. It's completely unlike any other cruise ship sail away I've been on. Usually when a cruise ship sails away, it's just a matter of minutes before it's in open water. But in New Orleans, it takes something like six hours of cruising down the Mississippi River before the ship actually makes it out into the Gulf of Mexico. Let's watch a minute or two of a time-lapse video I shot as we sailed down the Mississippi. And if you want to watch more, just click the link at the top of the screen.
One of the ports on our Western Caribbean itinerary was Costa Maya, Mexico. And as Kellen and I walked down the pier, she came up with a very witty line. I was quite impressed. She pointed to that white wall over on the right there, and she said, Hey, I bet Mexico really did pay for that wall. In Costa Maya, there are shops, several restaurants, and a really nice large swimming pool that you can use at no charge at all. Our favorite attraction there is a series of walk-through bird aviaries known as Aviarius. It's actually elevated up in the air over the pool and resort area, and you use a series of bridges to get from one aviary to another. A set of double doors keeps the birds from escaping. Our favorite part is spending time with the macaws. Something you probably don't know about us is that about 20 years ago, Kellen and I had a pet macaw. We didn't fully realize the amount of attention that a macaw requires, and in retrospect, we probably never should have adopted that macaw. We weren't really the ideal candidates to care for a macaw at that point in our lives, since our two kids and a dog got most of our attention back then. We only had that macaw for about a year before we ended up finding a better home for him, but even after all this time, we've still got a fondness for macaws. So it was a real treat to be able to take as much time as we wanted to hang out with the macaws in Costa Maya. Especially Kellen. I like macaws, but Kellen loves them. We also actually had an aviary in our backyard at one point back in the day with parakeets and cockatiels and finches. And as you can see, parakeets still love me. Now let's do a one minute montage of all the cute and colorful birds in Costa Maya. There were three ships visiting Costa Maya on this particular day, and you get a bit of a look at the other two in this time-lapse video I shot as we sailed away from Costa Maya. We had a fun time visiting the aviary and seeing all the birds, and in case you're wondering, the entry fee to visit the aviary was $12 each. We had one of the most enjoyable shore excursions of all time during our visit to Cozumel. We took a boat ride up to the north side of Cozumel for a visit to Passion Island. And we had a great time on this beautiful beach. Look at the clarity of that water. This shot gives you a little look around at the layout there at the beach. You get to take your pick of where you want to be, at a table or in a lounger close to the beach, or back a little further in the shade of the palm trees. I learned a long time ago to be careful not to get sunburned on a beach day, so I opted for this nice little spot under a big shady canopy. And I guess I should mention that this was an all-inclusive shore excursion, which is cruise lingo for an excursion where the drinks are included at no extra charge. So I had a guy bringing me rum and cokes the entire day. I tipped him 10 bucks at the end of the day, and we were both very happy. Of course, it wasn't just me enjoying cocktails on Passion Island that day. And after a couple of hours, Everyone was feeling the effects, and that's when this happened. The passion took over at Passion Island, and the young ones all got up and started dancing. Now, due to copyright laws, I can't use the music that was actually playing when all this was going on, 
So you get this generic, royalty-free music instead, but I think you get the idea. After lots of dancing, and just to be clear, I'm definitely not complaining about the dancing, it was fun to watch, a conga line formed. And notice that the guy at the front of the line has a bottle of booze. Pretty soon, the adults were getting shots just before reaching a limbo pole, and an epic beach limbo contest broke out. If you want to watch an extended version of it, click the link up at the top of the screen. Now, I know that there's some people that are going to say it's creepy of me to be shooting video of girls in bikinis doing limbo. But look, I'm trying to give you a glimpse of what a Caribbean cruise is all about, and specifically the kind of fun to be had on the Passion Island excursion in Cozumel. My wife and I both thought that this was one of the most fun excursions we had ever been on, and we agreed that on a future cruise to Cozumel, we will do it again. The limbo contest was open to all ages, but if you've ever watched people doing limbo before, you know that the tallest people are quickly eliminated from the contest, and in the end, it always boils down to the shortest ones. These two girls were the last two remaining after the limbo stick got down to a ridiculously low level, and this girl right here was the final winner. There was actually a lot more to like about Passion Island than just drinking and dancing. They served up an amazingly great lunch for us. These chicken fajitas that I had were fantastic. Should I be embarrassed that I opted for a side of fries with them? Ah, anything goes on Passion Island. The fajitas were actually so good that I went back for a second plate with a side of beans that time. And since the subject has now become food, let's talk about the dining situation on Norwegian Breakaway. I learned the hard way on MSC Seaside that if the food is not to your liking on a seven-day cruise, it's just not going to be a really great cruise. No such problem on Norwegian Breakaway. NCL's core customer is Americans, so the food is perfectly suited to American tastes. I had one heck of a great steak at Cagney's Steakhouse. I was especially delighted because at a restaurant in New Orleans before the cruise, I got served a steak that was so badly burned, I had to ask them to cook me a new one. So eating this perfectly cooked porterhouse on the Norwegian Breakaway was a treat. And it was especially enjoyable to have our meal outdoors on the waterfront with this beautiful view. The reason we booked this cruise on this particular week is that we're celebrating our 38th wedding anniversary. That's us back in 1981. And here we are now, older and wiser. For our anniversary dinner, we decided to dine in the Manhattan Room on Norwegian Breakaway. It's one of my favorite restaurants on board because there's often live music played there. The buffet restaurant on the Norwegian Breakaway is known as the Garden Cafe, and I was delightfully surprised by something that happened there one night. The backstory is that in the 47 cruises we've been on, Kellen and I have noticed that most cruise ships either don't serve Mexican food at all, or they serve really horrible Mexican food. Of course, there have been a few exceptions, but it's rare for cruise ship Mexican food to impress me. However, Norwegian Breakaway was actually one of those exceptions. They did a Mexican night in the buffet one night, and it was actually surprisingly good. There were tacos, taquitos, beef fajitas, chicken fajitas, empanadas, burritos, and a nacho station, as well as several other things. If I ran a cruise line, there'd be a Mexican station at the buffet just like this every night. But at least NCL offered it one night, and there were certainly lots of other great dining options to fill the other six nights. If you like nachos, there is an even better source aboard Norwegian Breakaway. 
Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville Restaurant. The volcano nachos there are amazing, and one order will easily feed two people, or they make a great appetizer for four or five people. And speaking of comfort food, Kellen and I visited this place several times during the week. It's a little place on the waterfront where you can get gelato. It does cost a couple of bucks, and most people would probably be just as well off to go up to the buffet where you can get ice cream for free. But Kellen liked this place better because they had some non-dairy sorbet, which wouldn't cause problems with her dairy allergies. My favorite meal of the day is breakfast. And we had some fantastic breakfasts on Norwegian Breakaway. We paid the big bucks for a suite in the Haven. And one of the many benefits of staying in the Haven is having access to the private Haven restaurant. But for breakfast, rather than eating inside the restaurant, I prefer to have them serve it to us out in the Haven courtyard. I like the casual atmosphere in the courtyard better under the big glass dome. Now, let me show you our suite. And I just want to mention one thing first regarding the flickering of the lighting on the wall that you see in this video. That is strictly a flickering in the video. The cabin lights don't appear to flicker to the human eye when you're actually in the suite. It's just at the frequency that the lights operate at and the frame rate of my camera are a little at odds. So in the video, you see a flickering effect, but believe me, in person, you would see nothing of the kind. This is a very unique type of cabin that most cruise lines don't offer. It's known as a Haven Spa Suite. And here is the most unusual thing about the suite. It has its own private whirlpool tub. Not in the bathroom, not on the balcony, but in the room right next to the bed. And with a window so you can look out at the ocean from the tub. The tub is big enough for two people to share, and because they've placed it in the bedroom, not in the bathroom, I think you have to assume that the intent here is that this tub is for a romantic couple to enjoy together. So this is the perfect suite for honeymooners or any couple where the spark is still very much alive. I want you to notice the amount of space between the desk and the bed. This is not a cramped cruise ship cabin. They've been very generous with the size of this suite. And if you close those curtains, something interesting happens. Let me show you from the other side. It makes a nice little dressing area with the closet on the right and the bathroom on the left. With the closet open, and as I rotate the camera around, I think you'll see better what I mean. The bathroom is quite a bit better than your average cruise ship bathroom. Notice that it's a double sink, not a single. And over to the right there, that's the shower. Notice the glass door, not a shower curtain. And the shower is large enough for two people to share. That's really rare for a cruise ship shower. The shower head can move higher or lower on that rail. So if you've got a tall person sharing the room with a short person, the shower head easily adjusts. And down below, there are nozzles you can turn on if you want to spray your legs and midsection or leave them off if you don't want them. Cruise ship bathrooms are usually very cramped, but this one is generously sized and one of the best you'll find. Back out at the desk, for you coffee or tea drinkers, everything you need is right here. As far as electrical outlets, you've got a European style and an American style outlet right next to each other here. And there's one more American style power outlet at the desk that you can use. But this ship was built before cruise ships started putting USB charging outlets in the cabins. On the left side of the bed, there's one more electrical outlet and that's great for people that need to use a CPAP machine to sleep at night. Or just for those that like to have their phone next to the bed as it charges overnight. However, there is no power outlet over on the right side of the bed. Of course, this is a balcony suite. So you can sit on the balcony and enjoy those fantastic views. 
The Haven Spa Suite is great, but the perks that come with it are even better. There's a butler that can deliver full meals to the suite, which you can eat here at this table. You also have the Haven Concierge working for you, and he's got amazing powers. Want reservations to a comedy show that's already listed as being fully booked up? He can probably get you in. Want the best table in one of the specialty restaurants or at one of the dinner shows? He got them for me. Because this suite is a spa suite, it comes with full access to the thermal suite within the spa. So you can enjoy the warm indoor thermal pool, the jacuzzi, the heated tile loungers, the sauna and steam rooms, and the super comfortable padded loungers with the great views. But the best perk of all is that when you stay in a Haven suite, you are one of only about 270 people out of all 4,000 passengers on the ship who will have access to the private Haven courtyard, the private Haven sun deck, the private Haven restaurant, and the private Haven Bar and Lounge. And just in case you're not fully grasping the importance of that, let me give you a graphic illustration. Norwegian Breakaway is a mega cruise ship with 4,000 passengers. It gets loud and crazy. It can be crowded. If that's not what you're looking for, if you value relaxation and luxury and the full attention of the staff, Pay attention to what I'm about to show you. I was walking around with my camera, shooting scenes at various parts of the ship. This was the scene I saw at the bar out by the main pool on a sea day. Kind of crazy. And about five minutes after I took that shot of the bar by the pool, here's what it looked like at the private bar inside the Haven Lounge. If you like what you see here better than what you saw out by the pool, you should think about saving for a cruise in the Haven. For my wife and I at this point in our lives, we've worked hard, we've saved well, and we can afford it. The Haven is our favorite way to cruise. If you'd like to book a cruise on Norwegian or any cruise line, feel free to use my travel agent, Caitlin Gallagher. Her fees are fully paid by the cruise lines, so her services cost you nothing at all, and she can really help steer you in the right direction, take care of all the details for you, and keep you from making any rookie cruiser mistakes. Contact Caitlin, the owner of Ambrin Travel, and she'll take good care of you. I'm Jim Zim. Getting close to having done 50 cruises now. We're not there yet, but almost. Just in the last 11 years, we've done 46 cruises. So, life is good. Do me a favor, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. That helps me a lot with YouTube. If enough people give it a thumbs up, YouTube recommends the video to more people, and it kind of snowballs. <laughs>